Today is big reveal day. We've been diligently working on a little pattern making project that I've named Ava. While quite simple in nature, this little project is packed with pattern making tips, tricks, and techniques that will help you understand how to use your personal bodice block. I hope you've been working on your own version along with me. If you're just joining in, not to worry, I've got the links to all the previous pattern making tutorials listed on this page. I'm Alexandra Morgan from In-House Patterns and In-House Pattern Studio. If you don't have a basic bodice block yet, take a look at my online course designed to fit the bodice block. It will walk you through all the steps to create a made to measure bodice block that fits. Now, if you just want to give pattern making a try, I've created some free mini block patterns that you can download and print. So you can still follow along with all the tutorials. I'll leave links to those resources on this page. Keep watching to see the first sample of the Ava pattern design project. So here we have my finished test sample for the Ava pattern that we have been developing over the month of January. Um, I just have my iPad here, which is why I'm looking over here so I can see myself and uh, kind of talk to you about what we're seeing here. So first of all, I wanted to point out that I did put the balance lines on the garment here, which is what I always like to do when I'm testing a pattern or testing the fit of any sort of garment. Um, because what I find is, is that it actually can reveal some clues about potential fitting issues if there are any. So what I like to use it for is if you're seeing wrinkles or sort, sort of drag lines on your garment, you can always take a look at the balance lines to sort of try to assess exactly where the problem might be lying. So it's just kind of a helping hand to reading the wrinkles as most people say. So what I want to always do is put the balance lines on, which you know from last week that we drew them on. And what I've done here is of course stitch them in and I think I talked about that last week. So you can see here like as I move around and I'll just go in a circle here so that you can see kind of what the balance lines are doing on my body. So you can see here that they are relatively level, which is a great clue that this garment is actually pretty good fitting, which as you know, it should be if my bodice block fits, any garment that you create from a bodice block is also going to fit. Now that doesn't mean you won't need some tweaking here and there, because as you can tell from the last month, the pattern does go through quite a few changes as you're manipulating it and rotating darts. But in essence, the bulk of all of the fitting issues that you normally have when you are working with commercial patterns don't exist when you actually develop your own personal bodice block and make it fit you. So that's the whole purpose of creating a basic bodice block in my personal opinion. Now, one of the things I wanted to point out about the Ava sample that I made is that I wasn't purely happy the way the neckline facings went into the neckline. Now, you may have noticed actually on the pictures of myself in the sample is that the neckline looked a little bit crooked and that might have been just poor sewing but some of it may be just in the treatment of the neckline facing that I created. So you'll see here that I actually, ha I have, actually have two layers of patterns here. The one on top is the one that I used to create my sample. And the one underneath is just one that I recreated, which is a tracing, exact tracing of the uh, neckline from the main pieces of the pattern. So this is always the starting point for any kind of neckline facing. Now you'll notice that last time Time when I did create these particular facings is I basically trimmed back the neckline facing by an eighth of an inch. Now the reason it was difficult to get this neckline facing into my neckline is that of course when you cut something back like this it means the neckline of the neckline facing is actually larger than the actual neckline that you're sewing it to. So what happens is, is you sort of have to force the two together. So I have another method of creating facings that I think might work better for this particular project. So I think that's what we're gonna do here. So these were the originals that I already created. Again, perfectly good method of creating a facing. An eighth of an inch was too much for my particular fabric because it was a little bit thinner than I kind of anticipated it would be. So I, the alternative to this 
is knocking it back only a sixteenth of an inch, or you can use this particular method that I'm going to show you now. And it's going to be a little bit counterintuitive, but I encourage you to try it if you found the same thing with your sample. So as you know, I traced this exactly from the neckline. I closed the darts that were on the neckline so that we could create our facings. Uh, make sure that you mark center front and center back so that you don't confuse the shoulder line to the center line. Now, all you need to do to create a facing that might work better than the one we originally created is we're gonna knock back this corner of the neckline facing at the front by an eighth of an inch and we're gonna make it wider by an eighth of an inch. So in other words, it's gonna be like this really, really simple little pattern alteration it's going to be an uh, eighth of an inch there, and we are going to do an eighth of an inch here. So we're going to go from an eighth of an inch to nothing at this neckline area here. Sorry, at the outside edge of the neckline facing. And this one, we are simply going to blend right into the existing uh, neckline here. So I'm going to use my curve and just create a new line that blends into my existing neckline. Okay, so you're gonna see here it kind of tapers to nothing as we get into the neckline. We are going to remove this area of the neckline. Now for the back, we're going to do exactly the same thing. So again, I'm gonna knock this corner back at the neckline by an eighth of an inch. And I'm also going to do this one by an eighth of an inch. So I'm basically knocking out that corner and then blending back into the outer edge of the back neckline facing here. And then I'm going to use my little curve here, which this one might work a bit better in this case. And I'm just going to shave off that little bit of that edge. Now you're going to notice that this also makes the neckline facing slightly larger um, in terms of its circumference around the neckline, but we compensate for that by reducing the length on this side. So that's the pattern I'm going to go with for the next time I make this particular garment, and then I'm gonna test it there. So I'm gonna have two options for neckline facings this way. So let's go ahead and trim these extra sections off. I'll put the labeling on, and then what I'm gonna do is just show you the very, very final pattern with all the seam allowances added and everything completed. Okay, so we're gonna take a last look at our Ava top pattern. So you can see here what I've done is simply traced out my working pattern and put it onto some translucent paper. Added seam allowances, my markings, and also all of my labeling. Now I want you to notice here that what I've done for labeling is made sure that I have my bust, waist, and hip line on the pattern. I also have my high hip area here too. The other thing I've done is I've measured the entire pattern to make sure that I can have the pattern measurements, I have the body measurements that this particular pattern was built for, and I've also included the amount of ease that's included here. Now the reason you want to make record of this is simply so that you can learn from what you've already done. As you begin to design with your block and you add different styling and you manipulate your pattern in different ways, you're going to end up with different measurements for the finished measurements and the ease. And once you start to work with your block, you're going to start to understand what ease amounts work best for certain silhouettes. This is the reason I want you to always be aware of the measurements. This is why I always talk about you know, the body measurements, the pattern measurements, and the ease when you work with commercial patterns. It's the same thing. I want you to understand how the pattern actually arranges itself on your body and why you need ease in some areas and more in others and less in others so that you start to understand how the silhouette and all the measurements sort of relate to each other. So here's the front grain line always matches that of center front um, in this case. And of course, I've got my how many to cut and what to cut it in. Here is my back pattern piece up next. 
Okay, so similar thing that we've done here. Again, we've got my bust, waist, and hip lines marked. I've also got my high hip marked. I've got my across back marked and measured here. And I've also done my shoulder to shoulder measurement with the dart closed. So you'll notice that I closed the dart, drew my shoulder to shoulder line, and then was able to measure it correctly. Um, and then I can also indicate the ease in this area of the pattern as well. I've got all my notches marked and everything's clear here. Again, all my labeling is done. Green line follows that of center back because we are placing it on fold. Okay, so here we have our sleeve pattern. Again, all the labeling and marking is done. Grain line follows that of the center line of the sleeve, which is always halfway between the bicep line. I've got all my seam allowances marked, my hem allowances marked there as well. All the notches are marked. Once again, I'm making a record of my bicep girth, my body measurement, and of course the ease that's included there. You can also make note of how much ease you have in the sleeve head. That's always a good idea. I didn't do that here because I know that my block has a total of one inch of ease and I haven't actually made any changes with that. But for record, it might be a really good idea to make sure that you write how much ease there is there so that you know regardless next time. And last but not least, we have the front and back neckline facing. So you can see here what I've done is actually put them on the fold. It's not necessary to do this, but it is definitely something that I like to do with facings um, because it just makes them a little bit bigger piece. I can always choose um, in order to create the amount of space that I need on the the fabric. Sometimes it's good to cut it out in single layer and sometimes it's okay to do it on fold. You actually get more accurate pattern pieces when you cut small pieces like this on the whole. So that's just something to think about um, for future. Again, notches um, have been applied and all of our markings. One of the things I wanted to, to mention too though, what you can do and which is common in the industry when you're working with handmade patterns is you actually write the other fabric type in a different color. This sort of alerts you automatically to the fact that you need to cut another set of these because I have put cut one interfacing on each of this in green marker. So that tells me that I need to separate these pieces again and cut those uh, pieces next. Now I know that you've heard me say before that Often in the industry, you'll actually make separate pattern pieces for the interfacing pieces because you can actually make them slightly smaller all the way around so that the glue doesn't spill over onto your ironing board. You can definitely do that. It's just a little bit quicker to skip that step, but by all means, if you think it's gonna be a pattern that you're gonna use over and over and over again, it's a really good idea to make separate interfacing pieces. I wanted to give you one final look at the Ava top that we created together. I'm hoping that you did follow along with me because I'm pretty happy with what we accomplished here. So I've taken out the balance lines, of course, and removed that basting stitch and added a little bit of accessory. And I think it's pulled together the whole look a lot better. By all means, you can do uh, much more with this, with accessories for sure. I just put on a necklace and took out the balance lines, but I'm really happy and pleased with the hang and the look of it. So I hope that you are excited about yours as well if you followed along. I do want to point out that there are a couple of things that you can do to sort of either jazz this up or change the look of it ever so slightly. So what you can do instead of stitching the darts all the way to their dart points, you can create pleats instead. And you can do that by only stitching partially the, the darts, or you can actually just fold the darts and keep them as pleats. The other thing you can do is you can create gathers instead of darts or pleats. So just gathering up that front edge of the neckline is actually going to make it look a little bit more, uh, give your bust a boost if you need it. For instance, if you're a little bit smaller cup size and you want to emphasize your bust a little bit more, gathers are really going to help you do that. If you're larger busted like me, by all means, uh, the darts or the pleats are probably going to be a better option for you. The other thing that I thought that we could do considering that we've got a very flat finish with all the darts at the neckline, what you can do is sort of either applique or bead or embroider this area of the top. I think it'd be really, really cute. This particular color orange uh, would be really great with wooden beads. 
I couldn't find anything. I did look yesterday to see if I could find something that would work, but it I couldn't find anything. Um, but I'll keep my eye out and see how that goes. Uh, but by all means, I think this is going to be a great little top for summer. I hope that you are going to enjoy yours as well. That completes the Ava design project. I hope you enjoyed the process, learned a few things, and are beginning to understand how valuable a made to measure bodice block can be. Remember, pattern making skills are not only for those who want to design their own patterns, they are just as valuable to those who want to alter the styling of commercial sewing patterns. To me, pattern making and fitting go hand in hand. The more you understand about patterns, the greater success you'll have with fitting. I hope you enjoyed this video series. If you've been following along and making your own version of the Ava top, I would love to see it. You can tag me at in-house patterns on social media, and of course use the hashtags, hashtag Ava, hashtag in-house patterns, and hashtag in-house pattern studio. I can't wait to see what you create. I'll chat with you soon. Bye for now.